Hello, thanks for joining me. Today we are unboxing a new telescope. Uh, this arrived in the post a couple of hours ago and I've not, I'm quite excited because I've not had a telescope for quite some time now. Uh, owing to the fact that I've had to move house and that costs a lot of money, so I sold everything. So I've just been making do with a tripod and a camera, doing things like time lapses and stuff. But I've had this mount sort of tucked away in the garage, which is something I picked up a few months ago on the second hand market, and it was only £60 and it's got a massive payload capacity and it's driven on the RA axis via a mains motor and it's kind of a friction plate affair so you can adjust it but once properly balanced it should kind of just stay and with the friction sort of track with the sky absolutely no idea what the periodic error is but i can't imagine it would be particularly accurate but hopefully it's good enough for things like lunar and planetary as you can see this has already got some integrated rings on it and i don't know if you can see sort of compared to the size of my hand average size hand they're looking about seven inches in diameter so you can imagine kind of what telescope you might be able to guess what kind of telescope i bought for this looking at how low down this is how long the tube would need to be and how wide it would need to be and what kind of telescope it would need to be to really fit this mount nicely so if you've not already guessed i bought a six inch f8 reflector so we're going to unbox it now and set it up More specifically, this is a Skywatcher 6 inch F8 Newtonian. It does only have a 1.25 inch focuser. So it's not going to be something, as well as the long focal length not being suitable, it's not going to be something that you'd attach a DSLR to. More, more so a planetary camera if you're going to do imaging. Look at that focuser. So it's a single speed 1.25 inch, so kind of old school really. But this is a classic, it's a classic reflector really, isn't it? A long focal length reflector. You don't really see as many of them nowadays. But they're a bit of a missed opportunity, I think, because, because it's such a shallow light cone because of the length of the tube. It's really easy to figure these mirrors, well relatively easy, to figure these mirrors to a really high standard and also because of the shallow light cone it means you can have a very small central obstruction. There we go, that angle's almost got there. See how small that is? So you've barely got any obstruction compared to say something like a SCT type telescope. So the contrast should be really high. In fact, I've owned a Dobsonian version of one of these and I liken the views to a five inch Apo. It was a bit of a job, but I've got the optical tube set up on the mount now. It wasn't as straightforward as I thought it was going to be because these, these strips, that, these are, uh, rings, the original rings with the mount, they're kind of they're just kind of like straps. But they were too loose, so I've had to pad it out using some of the foam from the packaging for the telescope. And that's worked nicely and just to for an added bit of security I've put the original rings on which are gonna stop the tube sliding through and hitting the ground and it also gives this nice little grab rail on the back there. Now, I don't know about anyone else, but when I've got a Newtonian on a equatorial style mount, I always have the focuser opposite the counterweight bar. And that's so, whichever position you have the telescope, you can always reach the focuser. If you had the focuser there, 
it would only work one side of the sky basically but if you have it neutral then you can reach it whichever side of the meridian you're on really this is just to give you an idea of the light pollution at the front of my house so i've got a street light there two street lights over in the distance that house has got two security lights that aren't on at the moment but are on quite a lot and there's uh, another street light over there and of course with it being christmas their lights up, including ourselves. We've got a flying sun today, you can see. So, I'm not just bitching about other people, I'm making a better light myself. Anywho, this is why I've got kind of a planetary setup in the garage facing that way because you can't really do deep sky anything really at the front of my house. The back of my house is a little bit better. Because it's a planetary telescope, I'm gonna nickname it Darth Vader because it's black, shiny, and it kills planets. Hopefully it will anyway. I've gotta get in and put the kids to bed now. So there'll be no more fun and games for tonight, but obviously I've got a telescope back now, so I can hopefully do some astronomy other than using my camera on a tripod. I've not even got a pair of binoculars. <laughs> So I got this today. So I'm pretty excited. I mean, it is a rustic kind of industrial looking mount, but it is driven. I've, I'm looking forward to sort of testing it out and just sort of making sure it works properly. If it tracks planets and the moon, I'll be happy for any reasonable amount of time. I'm not expecting it to have any deep sky imaging capabilities, especially at F8 with a 1.25 inch focus. It's just not really the setup for that, other than piggybacking a camera on the back of these rings but then I'm just literally pointing at that focuser so I just I think this is just going to be a planetary lunar setup for imaging and it's going to be with six inches of aperture it's going to be a pretty decent sort of observing sort of setup as well I think but you know I, I like imaging because it means I can share it with people and share what I'm doing with you guys and you know hopefully anyone coming into the hobby can see that I'm doing it on really on the cheap I mean you don't need to spend a lot of money to get going really with basic imaging of planets and the moon that that's that's quite cheap compared to deep sky imaging this whole setup even buying the telescope brand new the actual optical tube 185 this pedestal mount that's driven cost me 60 quid so what's that 245 pounds anyway I'm going to get inside and get the kids to bed now, so wish me luck. Um, hopefully I'm going to catch some AVI files of the moon and planets with this and play about with it and I'll let you know how I get on if you want to sort of check back in. Catch you later. Thanks a lot. Bye. Before I forget, I'll just show you the accessories that come with the Skywatcher 150PL. The P is for parabolic, the L is for long, long F ratio. Um, so yeah, you get a six, uh, a six times 30 mil finder, and there's the, the bracket for that. And you get the usual, this, I say usual because pretty much all Skywatcher telescopes, other than the Pro Series ones, come with these super 10 and super 25 modified acromat eyepieces which are just really basic eyepieces the 25 being pretty decent for what you get for a start and the 10 mil being not so great but it will get you going and there's also a two times bio lens which is a bit surprising really because the the telescope's already got a huge amount of focal length so <laughs> you kind of I'm a bit surprised you actually get a Barlow lens with that. But yeah, some of the some of the premium, more premium Skywatches come with a 2-inch 28mm Kellner. I think it's like a Kellner eyepiece, and that's a single eyepiece. But yeah, the, the more budget tubes come with these two modified Acromat 10 and 25mm eyepieces.